tens of thousands of us who are discontented. We see common people dying in senseless wars and starving in the midst of plenty. What are we to do? Bow our heads in submission? Petition our betters for change? Rise up and smite our oppressors? We want Thomas Paine, the great proponent of revolution, and Edmund Burke, who has become the great opponent of same to debate. The subject will, of course, be revolution. And upon the outcome of their debate, your lives and our fate will depend. Here is man. Men make revolutions. So first we must determine man's nature. Pain. What do you think, Burke? Do we have a choice? I believe that man, uncorrupted by government, is reasonable. I believe in the certain progress of mankind through the development of the human mind. Men have only to be given the chance to think, and they will neither act unwisely nor be misled. In short, I believe in the power and inevitable triumph of reason. Burke, belief in the goodness and perfectibility of man is in the very air we breathe. It is a philosophy that has been persuasively spread by Rousseau and Paine here. But it is a false doctrine. From my observation, man is governed not by reason, but by passion. He is full of ambition, greed, and fear. Being a man, I love men. Yet if I depended on man's benevolence, I would have been destroyed long ago. With such contradictory views of mankind, how is man to be governed? As little as possible. In a free society, each man is his own governor. Liberty must be limited in order to be enjoyed. Society requires that the inclinations of men should frequently be controlled. This can only be done by a power outside themselves, by government strong enough to govern. 